Hey guys, new inflation numbers are coming out tomorrow and fresh data from the New York Fed says it's not going away. In fact, it could be re-accelerating going by the fundamental core measure that the Fed worries about. So the beatings will continue. First, the numbers. Every month, the New York Fed asks regular Americans how much they think prices will go up in the next year and then in the next couple of years. In the latest release, both one-year expectations and three-year expectations popped up. So now the average American thinks inflation will run 4.7% over the next year. To put that in perspective, it's worth noting that last year's peak of 8.9% inflation, remember these are official numbers, unofficial numbers are much higher. Anyway, at that official peak of 8.9, Americans had only expected 4.8%, about the same as now. So inflation came in almost twice what Americans expected. This is possibly because the Fed and Treasury were lying to them that inflation was transitory, which Americans believed because both the Fed and Treasury employ hundreds of PhD economists who Americans don't realize are paid to lie. By the way, the Fed's very open about doing this. They call it forward guidance. So if recent experience is a guide, it could actually come in much higher, again, because they are certainly lying again. It's literally their job. And so, right on cue, it's back to gaslighting. Last time around, the excuses included COVID-19, Vladimir Putin, and of course, global warming. But above all, too many people buying stuff on Amazon. Exercise bikes came in for a special two-minute hate at a White House press conference. Now, once again, regular Americans are to blame. To blame for the orgy of money printing by Wall Street and its servile Fed, all to make room for the $7 trillion in federal deficits and the bonus trillion spawned from zero interest rate policy that they use to bribe voters into accepting lockdowns. All that freshly printed money stealing their dollars buying power, like pouring water into wine. And so they stole your paycheck, they stole your life savings, but it is your fault, once again, or still trying to buy groceries. Bloomberg takes a stab at the genre today with an article blaming consumers for paying higher prices, demanding they instead start TikTok shame campaigns and organize one-star review campaigns to punish grocery stores. They wax nostalgic about similar pressure campaigns in the 1970s, hoping that Americans once again blame their local grocer for the trillions stolen by Washington and Wall Street. It's worth noting that Grocery stores make almost no money. They generally make about one to three cents on the dollar, while Wall Street collects $275 billion in Federal Reserve printings, plus another $263 billion in profits on the exorbitant privilege of Xeroxing money and lending it out, fractional reserve banking. And so rather than blame the $6 trillion plus in money creation or the $7 trillion in counting in federal deficits, it is your local grocer who will take one for the team to hide the swindle. He's the one who's got to wake up early, work for free, or else the useful idiots will run TikTok and Google review him out of business. Note the pattern. Every time the official experts break it, which is quite often these days, the first reaction isn't to fix it or even figure out what they did wrong. It's to find a scapegoat quick. Pay no attention to the men behind the curtain. With a lapdog media right there with them, glorified coupon circulars whose only remaining source of prestige is government favor. We'll see more gaslighting as long as they keep breaking things, which at the moment looks to be a while. Okay, we'll be watching. See you next time.